Hey everyone, this is Kevin with the We'd Like to Talk podcast. Uh, Today's episode number two is going to be a pretty cool one. We're going to uh, expand a little bit from last time. Uh, If you remember in episode one, we talked a little bit about uh, just the industry, uh, the differences between, you know, caregiver versus commercial, recreational versus medical, some of the different application methods and how to consume the various products. Uh, We heard some funny stories just about craziness in cannabis and, and the fun of starting a business in it and told you guys a little bit about what we're going to come or come with come to the party with here on out in terms of content and, and guests and visitors. So we're really excited about this one. Um, I'm going to introduce my guests. I'm not going to steal their thunder, though. Um, I got Michael Lewis here and I got Derek Merlini, both uh, partners in Planted Provisioning, a uh, recently new dispensary in Michigan with two locations now, one in Whitmore Lake, one in Flint. So uh, without further ado, I am going to let them uh, get into their introduction. I want to find out, actually tell you guys and gals a little bit more about them. So uh, let's start with you, Mike. Uh, Tell us a little bit about, kind of about yourself and uh, specific to your background in cannabis, maybe. Okay. Uh, Name's Mike Lewis. I got into cannabis about, what was it, Derek, eight years ago? Something like that. I mean, a few years after me. So I started around 10. It's Yeah. The the exact timeline's a little hazy, but somewhere around 10 years. (laughs) I, uh, I think I first tried cannabis when I was a junior in high school uh, in a pop can, <laughs> the old pop can bowl, um, and then progressed through college and rolled a few spliffs in my day, but uh, didn't, really get into, didn't really get into cannabis until I'd say probably two and a half, three years ago, um, actually consuming it. Like smoking? Okay. Yeah, but consuming it. But uh, the actual industry itself, I would say eight years ago. Okay. Getting to understand really, you know, the, the so footprint in it of for it. eight and smoking about two to three, eh? Yeah, interesting. Okay, cool. So still kind of a virgin, yeah, if you yeah. want. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, you know, I hear that. I do hear that more and more, honestly, from people, which is which is cool. Yeah, I don't have the tolerance that uh, nearly anybody else has. It's a one in, one hair quitter type guy, but that I can um, attest to. I was on an airplane with you before <laughs> when you took a small edible, ten milligrams, and you thought it was fifty, and I was lying to you, and I wasn't. It was ten. Yeah, that one but, hurt. Yeah. <laughs> tolerance is more now, but that was sheer a, anxiety. That attack. was a funny <laughs> flight, and it sucked too because that pilot. I remember at one moment you looked down at me, or, like, or looked, looked next to me, you're like. Oh my God, we're gonna die! And I know we're not afraid of flights, but that one like was. Crazy. Well, when you come out of Denver, though, you're—I mean, you're—you're—you're yeah. you're, you're, you're going through the clouds pretty heavy. That was scary, though. I was nervous. Yeah, yeah. Well, Derek, what about you, man? Tell us about you. So yeah, I've been in the uh, weed business now for about ten years. Uh, m- you know, in the caregiver growing side of it uh, for a while now. Uh, now with the new legalization, and everything we got our new grows going here, and you know, getting situated in the new system now. So. You, know. you liking it? The, the uh, yeah, is? yeah. I mean, it's it's been it it's definitely improved the quality of the the product over the years. From you know, what I was growing ten years ago would be not even you know they wouldn't even <laughs> allow it in in the dispensaries yeah. now. So it's what they uh, call that? Rag, 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 yeah, rag, yeah, it, it would be the lowest of the low shelf, at, you know. But it was good back then, oh, you know. Yeah. So the overall quality is definitely you know gone way way up yeah. you know i would say smokable back then right yeah yeah smokable you remember back in high school they're like oh this is medical grade oh yeah oh, <laughs> or no government what was it g g13 g13 <laughs> this is grown by well, the I, government like how i always get that it's weird. <laughs> i always used to hear them talk about oh it's hydro it's hydro yeah, oh, which yeah. <laughs> now knowing what you know i mean there's no difference if it's grown hydro or not yeah. hydro it's just the quality of how it's grown yeah you know exactly I always well, thought they were growing at some like like math lab or something crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, people unfortunately still do think that, but <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, okay, cool. So hey, that that's a little bit about you guys. Qu- question for you. So obviously we mentioned Planted, right? The two dispensaries. Um, I know Mike, you have a very active role in the Flint one. Uh, your other partner Matt's not here today. Runs the Whitmore Lake one. Um, specific, I, I guess. Uh, like, what what made you start in retail? Like, where where did that all come from? Why why not the cultivation or processing? What what was it about retail? Did it just land naturally, or I I would say it was uh, just by opportunity. Uh, when we when Derek and I first started really getting into the growing aspect of things, we wanted to take it to the next level because I had prior years of business experience. Derek obviously had the knowledge of uh, the cultivation side, and we both had a vision that we wanted to be part of something bigger. Um, you could feel the presence around certain people that were in the cannabis space, and it was almost like being part of the cool guys, like mm-hmm. the guys, not like really the misfits, but people yeah. that were part of the, like the green rush that were yeah. – 
making a lot of money. They were creating something that was completely new, mm -hmm. and it was like a blank canvas. And when we set out to, to go on to the side for large-scale cultivation, everything we were looking for was just unreachable, untouchable. It was, it was three, $4 million for just property that was just barren waste. And banks weren't lending, I assume. No, banks, yeah. weren't, lend banks right. weren't lending. Yeah. It was still all medical, so mm -hmm. you were only focusing on a medical aspect of the market. Mm -hmm. And you know we're sitting there and building up and the the <clears throat> the, the footwork to go out and trying to find these facilities mm -hmm. and just for a year and a half took us about a year and a half to two years to get pre qualified mm -hmm. just before we came and start looking. Yeah, actually, dig into that for a minute because funny enough, you that was one of my next questions. So tell us a little bit about the the pre qualifying or I guess those high level steps maybe that kind of naturally had to happen for you guys to get to retail. So when we got pre qualified, that was back when the MRA had a board. And mm -hmm. you had to present your case to the board. Mm -hmm. And at that time, it would take, you know, standard about a year just to go through all that, unless you were really paying mm -hmm. the piper to get, get the job done quicker. But And this is to get able to have a license in cannabis, right? This Yes. This, okay. So this was Got basically it. to show that you, you met the background requirements. Mm -hmm. You didn't have any criminal background. Okay. And you had also the financial backing to supplement the business. So they didn't okay. want to just hand out licenses to somebody and then not generate any tax revenue for it. They wanted to give somebody a license, and they're going to get into business and start creating tax benefits mm -hmm. for it. So at that time, they wanted to make sure that you obviously weren't a criminal, but you had the money to do it, and yeah. you, know, you had a business plan and all that set forth for it. So we went forth and did that, and you had to have a certain amount of capital requirements. So while our records were clear, we didn't necessarily have $5 million <laughs> in the bank. <laughs> yeah. So we, we built a team of um, Derek and I, mm -hmm. and then we brought on uh, my stepbrother as mm -hmm. well um, for more of a workforce aspect yeah. of it. And then uh, Derek's father hopped in, and then my, my mother and my stepfather did mm -hmm. as well for the for more of the financial backing aspect of it. That's grassroots <clears> building right there. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, as we were, you know, looking for grows, and it was just getting to the point where, like, this is, like, this is difficult to find anything. Mm -hmm. And uh, our good friend Matt at the time was getting ready to get out of the dealership business, and mm -hmm. we were just talking one day, and he's like, you know, I see the opportunity. So I want to get in this as well. And Derek, Derek goes, hey, Mike, what do you think? I was like, hey, more the merrier. Yeah. We need some help because we're not getting it done, obviously. And then, uh, you know, all of us started looking for grows, and – we got to the point where it's like, guys, these grows are just astronomical. We're five, six million dollars in for right now at this point. Yeah. This is ridiculous. And Jeez. you know, we said, why don't we start looking at the retail route? Is that pretty similar to now, right? Where those prices were, were just, they were way, then. yeah, okay. you're, they were ten okay. x to what they yeah. were now. Okay. It was ridiculous. No, the, it, the, obviously, the grow market has cooled off big time now. You know, so yeah, where the grows time. now? Wait, uh, curious. So comparatively to when you were looking at. The grows versus when you were looking at the retail locations, which ones were more expensive? At the, I mean, I have to imagine the grows, right? Because of size. Well, it really depends because if you had a, if you were trying to get, say, a retail in mm -hmm. Royal Oak, I mean, those oh, locations yeah. are going to be big, big dollars. Mm -hmm. So it just it really would depend. But more or less, yeah, the grow. I mean, you would just have so much more equipment and everything else that goes into it than say like a dispensary. But you also don't have the the re, uh, the, the inventory and all that. But mm -hmm. The problem with the grows is, you know, you have all this money dumped in there and you don't get returns on that for a long time, wow. easily over a year, even a year and a half before you start getting money in. Mm -hmm. So going to investors, it's tough to explain that to them like, yeah, so it's going to take yeah. us a little while before we start getting money coming back in. Mm -hmm. So even at that point, though, banks didn't even want to have money that was related to cannabis. You had to pay yeah. like three thousand dollars a month membership fees. But oh, I, I think the, the issue that. was, is that the scarcity of what we were dealing with, mm -hmm. you were dealing with Michigan, obviously, that opted in back in what 2018 mm -hmm. and then you had the was it 2018 for our uh, no it was, well, i know it was november november we 18 we, was re, it was wrecked yeah. i think yeah but anyways regardless this you, is when you, we need that hired person at a computer yeah i need, I need, like, I need the stats because when we were when tomorrow. we were looking at cultivation you only had a few cities to look from mm -hmm. you had detroit you had flint and whatever the you know outskirts were yeah. warren and what have mm -hmm. you um but at that oh, point, yeah, was it was scarce. a much smaller amount of communities. Right? Yeah, you had yeah. you had certain cities that had opted in, and then you had certain zones and where you could. But you, you know, but you, you also grow. have with these cities, and what we found, you know, it's, as soon as these cities opt in, they say that okay, we only want three grows or anything mm -hmm. like that. Once they get open, they realize, well, wait, these grows aren't really that big of a deal. It's just a, a building like anything else sitting there. It's not this, you know, it's not this crazy thing going on. So then these cities start saying, well, why don't we do some more? You know, like, <laughs> why are we limited into yeah. only three when? when yeah, exactly. Yeah. Which so. they do good things, too. So we are not against them, but... Mm -hmm. 
Um, but you always have the scare tactics of the people saying, you know, it's going to ruin the community. The kids yeah. are going to walk by yeah. it, and it's you know, smell they're going to be, yeah. yeah, they're going to be selling out the back door, or you know, like. <laughs> It's going to get robbed yeah, every day. Yeah. All the crime. And then yeah. honestly, it ends up being like the total opposite, which uh, episode one back funny story about that. You guys got to check out uh, about a. We actually had somebody reach out to us that was against it. And we're like, you know, even after we were being against it and still against it, we like what everybody did with the community. So it's 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 doing mm-hmm. some cool things now. Actually. Mike, too, I have to ask, because I, I, I know when we were talking about uh, this show, you and uh, you and Matt, who's not here, Matt Ritz, uh, you had a funny kind of super random how it all happened. Well, not random, but I mean, funny story about some straight grit that led to the business today. Tell us about that. Okay. So I'm, I'm sure it goes into finding our first location, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. actual finding the yeah, first yeah. licensed location, because exactly. we found yeah, a uh, few hundred locations that yeah. they didn't okay. work out. Uh, this this was when we finally pivoted towards looking at retail by saying, yeah. hey, you know, Matt had some retail experience and we all had some rudimentary you know, understanding of it. Mm-hmm. I did some retail back in college and um, we also felt that it was it, it was not really like recession proof, but it mm-hmm. was it was a pivotal point of the industry. So whether the flower price was up or down, yeah. you still had an outlet. Mm-hmm. And we wanted to obviously be vertically integrated at some point. So whether it was the cart before the horse, we were going to get something in, in line. Uh I remember Matt and Derek went to saw and looked at a facility in Flint, and yeah. it was like we had to look at all of these um, amendments and all mm-hmm. these other uh, what were they uh, all easements and all. Oh, it was yeah, just yeah, it was yeah, a easements. disaster. Yeah. And uh, I remember when Matt one day called me, he was hey, you know, I heard you know Whitmore Lake's possibly thinking about opting mm-hmm. in, and uh, we paid attention to some of the meetings, went yeah. to some of them, and you're talking like the local, yeah, uh, okay. But we we did what we had always done. We were going online, trying yeah. to scratch a few services, call mm-hmm. some real estate agents, and yeah. I was like, this isn't working. Uh-huh. And I just, I, I woke up one morning after being on Matt's boat, I think it was like a Sunday morning. I was yeah. hungover as hell. <laughs> and it's like eight in the morning. I go, well, I'm finding this damn business today. Mm-hmm. I call Matt. He answers the phone. And he's crawling out of the bed. He's like, what is it? I'm like, get in the car. He's like, what? I was like, we're going to go find this damn business today the yeah. old school way. We're going to yeah. knock on some damn doors and we're going to get something in our contract. Mm-hmm. So Matt and I drive to Whitmore Lake. We're hungover as all hell. And he's like, you really think this is going to work? really think this is going to work? And I'm like, yeah, man. Yeah, I've done cold call sales for years. I got I got this. <laughs> mind you, I'm I've still pie-eyed. I've been cold calling dispensaries <laughs> for years. <laughs> yeah. So mind you, I'm still pie-eyed. And we get, down to, yeah. we get down to downtown Whitmore Lake. And we had actually parked right in front of our dispensary. Yeah. And at that time, it was, I want to say, four storefronts. And above it, there were mm-hmm. eight apartments, yeah, if you may. Yeah. And just and it was an older older building oh, I, too at the time, right? Yeah, that yeah. was actually a Kroger back in the early 1900s. It was it's old. Yeah, yeah. It took, I, know, I mean I just know from the building side, it took a lot of they had to do yeah. some re-supporting and everything to oh, you yeah. know. It and that'd be bad. a big investment too. I mean, for anybody coming in, not even in a cannabis business, um, it'd be a huge investment to redo one of those buildings in general. You'd have to y- your market is limited for the people that are going to be able to come in and spend that type of money in the business. Mm-hmm. I guess is what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just time wise and getting the whole city to buy so, into it. So you parked in front of there. You parked in front of this random building. Okay. Yeah. So we parked in front rock. of this random yeah. building, and uh, we did what we thought first was a, what we, there was no zone depicted yet because mm-hmm. they hadn't fully opted in yet. We were just trying to get an idea mm-hmm. of let's get ahead of it because every time we were going to some of these cities that had opted in, all these buildings were under contract within 24 hours. And Jeez. I know that people were getting there in advance. And when you say under contract, you mean what they they're like pretty much in and ready to purchase, or well, for example, if, if we're going to assume that building A is going to be within the green zone, mm-hmm. and we're going to put a an LOI on this property mm-hmm. to purchase it, contingent on it being uh, receiving a license, mm-hmm. if you may. So that's what we wanted to do. We wanted to get ahead of where everybody else was. We wanted yeah. to be ten steps ahead, so we, you know we could get mm-hmm. that license. So we had a, a basic understanding of. Whitmore Lake and the the structure of how it was put together, and we thought, you know, this would be a good area for a dispensary. Yeah. And we didn't even know where the green zone was, yeah. of where they were going to go. Did they even have it at that point? They didn't know. They didn't yeah. even have it. Yeah. So it's pretty new. Yeah. So we 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 put it. We looked at a few facilities, and at that that day, Matt and I knocked on probably 20, 30 doors, mm-hmm. and you know, halfway through it, we were about to throw the towel in because everyone was telling us to pound sand. You yeah. know, you guys aren't going to open any pot shops in my neighborhood. <laughs> 
Was, was I'm, I'm third were generation. Most people like that, or would you? Was I mean, like, when I went through, I actually it? was surprised. I mean, because we did. Remember, we were passing out the flyers yeah. and everything, and me and Alec were going up and down the street, mm-hmm. and those were those are the direct neighbors across the street from us. Yeah, I actually didn't get much resistance. I actually actually had more people saying, "As long as you're fixing up the building," because yeah. it was such an eyesore mm-hmm. that I would say. I, I had a few people that were not happy about it, but I would say there was way more that were like, oh, nice, Good. the building is going to be redone and everything. Well, this, so. this, this is after we had that building under contract. Yeah. Beforehand, we were asking people, hey, would you sell your business to us? Yeah. In the middle of their operation on a Sunday morning. And, I mean, that didn't go over very I well. I this mm-hmm. sub shop. There was, one, there was one tenant that was mm-hmm. in the building next door to us that's now Stacy's place, and she had, like, this little seamstress shop, and she... She MF'd us up one side mm-hmm. and down the other, mm-hmm. called the landlord. Mm-hmm. The landlord contacted me because I mm-hmm. gave them our business card. I was like, hey, if you're ever interested in selling, we're your guy. Yeah, yeah. We, <laughs> and we knocked around on every door, and yeah. we got nowhere. And mm-hmm. just as we're getting ready to leave, I looked over to my right when Matt was getting ready to get mm-hmm. in the truck, and I go, is this? It says for rent. Yeah. And I go, Matt, call that number. I'll uh-huh. bet that guy knows somebody that owns this building. Yeah. And while Matt was on the sidewalk, he ended up getting a hold of the guy who was handling the leasing for the facility Mm -hmm. and the guy who owned the property at the time was out of state or out of country. I can't remember exactly, but we tentatively had that place under contract in 24 hours and Matt and I were ecstatic and it was, that's a, that's a, that's a a sign. What do they call that? Divine intervention. Yeah. Yeah. Divine intervention. So then that was the start of it. And that was when the work just started. Yeah. But at that point, right. Cause at that point, so you guys, you got the building locked down. At that point, you don't even have a license, though. You're just kind of like, what, uh, throwing your name in the hat, mm-hmm. I guess, right? So I guess from there, right, um, what, what set you guys apart from other applicants? Like, what did you do differently? I mean, we had, you know, the whole presentation going, you know, a lot of the community outreach, I think, helped a lot. And, I mean, really, that building, I think, helped a lot, too. The fact mm-hmm. that we got that, those guys got that building there, I mean, for the community, it, it made so much sense to put it right there, you know, yeah. instead of out in the outskirts and everywhere else. I mean, like, I think that building was a big reason why, you know, to, mm-hmm. to start, you know, beautifying the yeah. city, which, you know, everybody. Well, beautification project, Yeah, right? every, yeah. And everybody, you know, we've talked to, I know, loves it. And, mm-hmm. you know, they all like like what's been done there and how yeah. it looks and mm-hmm. hasn't brought in the riffraff as, you know, the, mm-hmm. the, 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 the naysayers <laughs> they, were they, saying. They thought would bring. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I so. got more in, I got more involved in Whitmore Lake than I have in any city I've ever lived in. I've yeah. lived in Fenton for 18 I, years. I love Whitmore Lake. It's oh, like, I love it. It's, I want to move out that way, honestly. I, right? I, I got more involved in that area. two-year span, still mm-hmm. feel involved yeah. in that two-year span, than I had in 18 years in in Fenton mm-hmm. or years in Flint, years in Birmingham. It just, that was like... Yeah. It's, well, a, it's, it's a, a nice little town, place. and the location, it is crazy that it has not developed more than it is. Being right in between Brighton and Ann Arbor mm-hmm. right there, you know, two nice, bigger, developed communities, mm-hmm. and then you have this Whitmore Lake, which literally... They hadn't done anything yeah. in 30 years. So the location wise, and it's got a lake, you know? Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. I mean, both of those, you know, yeah. the yeah. fact that there'd really been no development there was really kind of, you know, wild. And now they're really pushing for a lot of development and, mm-hmm. you know, which is good. And you guys got another plate, uh, like uh, the building next door um, is also open to you guys. Are either thinking about doing something with it? A business with it or open to people eventually yeah, i mean eventually the the ultimate goal would we'd love to do some sort of a lounge there um That'd be the, awesome the big thing with that and i've talked to many people about it mm-hmm. is like you know the city still has to allow it so we're we got to be open for a little bit everyone's getting more and more comfortable with it mm-hmm. now you can go back to them and say okay yeah. listen this isn't that you know this isn't that crazy you yeah. know this is good for the community why don't we try this it's a, sa- a place for safe use yeah yeah mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and, and I mean, it, you know, it brings attraction in general, too. I mean, I guess not, not even just in cannabis, but like any new business like that where it's something mm-hmm. that you can go and do. Because I feel like recently, I'm off tangent, but everything's been just more more busy lately. I mean, restaurants, bars, top golf, everywhere you go, because people just want to get out. So by giving something different, some somebody something different to do, it attracts business downtown and brings brings mm-hmm. business for the other other businesses down there. I look at it as like the educational side of things because it's almost like a lot of these first time users they'll just buy stuff, go home and mm-hmm. just go, okay, now what do I do? Mm-hmm. Is YouTube how to mm-hmm. roll a blunt, or mm-hmm. <laughs> do I smoke this much or I smoke that much? I can much? roll a good blunt, but not a joint. Yeah, <laughs> I can't roll a joint, honestly. Subpar, at least. Yeah, I, no, literally horrible at a joint, but a blunt I can roll like with one hand, like standing on my head if that was possible. 
Well, that's, I mean, eventually you get to the point where you have places like Amsterdam, which mm-hmm. I've been to, and I've been in yeah. one of those cafes, and, you know, you're allowed to smoke in the cafe. Mm-hmm. It's not debauchery. It's yeah. not this crazy yeah. things going on. It's just like any other bar or cafe. Yeah, you just happen like, to be able to smoke a joint in there, yeah. and that's about it. You There's know? so many people that walk around that smoke a vape that almost looks like a like a nicotine pen. Oh, I know. But it's cannabis, and no one, no one bats an eye anymore. It's it's being it's being widely wildly accepted it everywhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's funny you met, he mentioned. Uh, uh, when you're talking about Amsterdam, I, I've been wanting to go to Amsterdam, going to Switzerland next month, and was going to try to vert over there. But I went to Spain, and it was the same way, uh, kind of like the cafe style. Mm-hmm. But it's uh, it's cool to see some of the other other countries like really adopting. And and sometimes we feel like we're behind in cannabis because it's still still been federally illegal, and uh, we haven't been able to like study it and do research. But some of these other countries, I mean, they're they're really starting to come up. So you kind of appreciate at least where we've gotten to yeah. in America with cannabis as being well. You know, I, being I think a lot of that too is because America did it. I think in a lot of those in a lot of you know facets like my they look at say okay the u.s did it well okay it's okay we can do it now too you know or not just us any other big countries you know anybody else yeah. they start doing it well the other country see okay that's not that yeah, bad yeah. Oh, well, let's try it you know yeah, people mm-hmm. aren't going crazy and jumping out of windows yeah. and killing people uh, <laughs> reefer madness that was that was mm-hmm. have you guys ever actually seen the full reefer madness no oh, just clips i just know about it yeah, you know well, yeah, youtube yeah if you yeah. haven't check it out it's hilarious they have people like freaking losing their minds after like a hit of a yeah. joint but um Bad okay holes. so so question for you then um well, kind of talked about how you guys got started the crazy process i'm sure we'll end up having an episode one of these days digging into retail and stuff and or cultivation processing and how to actually get started but um what was the f- I, I gotta ask each of you i have to hear each of your answers what was the most fun part about opening the dispensary the whole process, even from the licensing part, what was the most fun? Not rewarding, but fun. I'll let Eric? Jared go first. Oh, I know well, it's an open-ended, fun, so don't worry. I, you know, I, I'd say just, you know, I, if I would say one particular moment, no, mm-hmm. but just going in there and, you know, seeing it busy, seeing mm-hmm. the people and seeing people enjoying it, you yeah. know. In there, people come in and they just want to get high. Yeah, <laughs> so it's like, you know, it's you're yeah. dealing with people that are they're just coming in to have mm-hmm. a good time, more or less, you know. Yeah. So... Okay, so what about you? Most fun, funnest thing? You know, don't don't feel pressure. We can always edit it out with some cool music if you can't think. I would I would say the part of the licensing process yeah. or just actually getting the just the yeah. whole thing, even just opening the dispensary. I wouldn't say the f- licensing process yeah, right. was yeah. fun. <laughs> There's well, no part I, well, of that. Well, that's what I was gonna yeah. say. The one part that I would say as the licensing that was yeah. fun was that w- the day we were all at my condo and yeah. we had to do the Zoom meeting oh, to do to yes. do, the, do the final. Mm. The final do. Yeah. And by the way, <laughs> just so everybody knows, I, so I am a partner in the business. That's why he keeps saying we. Everybody's wondering, like, oh, why? Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm directing this because I want to tell the story because these guys are the ones that started. I was lucky enough to be brought on, but that's just to clarify. So at your condo, we're having fun. Yeah, we're all, we're that. all, there's, you know, five, yeah. five of us. You, know, you yelled at me that day. You were like, don't drink too much. I yelled every day, Kevin. It's just standard. Yell, <laughs> it's standard. <laughs> you just have a face yeah, that needs yeah. to get yelled at. <laughs> No, I, I would say that was probably the funnest because after all that work, it had all boiled down to that that twenty minutes mm-hmm. that we had. Yeah, and to see how many other applicants that were in there, and there was some big money oh, that yeah. was going against us. And yeah, strong well, applicants. Too. Well, what I think it, there was, was there like was a, 30, 30 applicants. But it, there was up. a certain point we were sitting there and we were calculating our votes. Like we just yeah. knew, and then we just kind of at a certain point we knew. Like I think we have the you know because we know this person's voting that way. We're pretty sure this yeah. post you know like. Yeah. But you did, so, and you earned those votes too. Yeah, I mean, you guys. I, oh, yeah. I know. Just a quick touch on it. You in the community? Didn't you guys did a bunch of? You were volunteering. Yeah. And you were oh, truly yeah. out. I, I, was, it wasn't I, just, I, yeah, we just paid attention to what yeah. I, I poured stuff. a small concrete pad for them, digging yeah. back on my concrete, you know, concrete <laughs> yeah. days. You're my go-to with that. I don't know that yeah. if people talking easements. I mean, now I know what it is. But well, I'm like, Derek, I need. I mean, I can do it. I don't, you know, I don't do it on a large scale or anything. I'd I still have to call in my uncle and use his tools and stuff like that. It's I, a whole thing. I put up. I put up one drywall piece this one time in my house in Nova, and uh, Lauren came home and I, she was looking at. It, she's like. Oh my God. She's like, who did that? And I was embarrassed. I was like, Oh, I did it. I'm going to sand it. And she was like, okay, whatever. I sanded it. I never finished the project. Contractor came back a couple weeks ago or a couple weeks later. I had him ended up quoting the job. Right. And I was like, yo, yeah, I'm going to need to do this drywall. And he looked up at the drywall and he's like, he goes, Oh, 
goes, who did this? Yeah. My wife looked at me with the biggest smirk. I'm like, oh, geez, that was me. So I was, that's why I was joking. I divert to you with construction related matters. I don't know anything about that. That is, that is like my worst. Yeah. Dry, drywall. I actually hate the drywall and painting are the two things. I yeah. just, I, I can Painting's do them. Yeah. I, I can do painting is 90% prep, you know, 10% yeah. actual painting, yeah. you know, and that just, <laughs> it's just frustrating. Once. Wait, what is it? Measure once, cut, well, cut, me- you're, ta- you know you're taping measure twice, cut you once. Know yeah, twice, cut one. once. But the really good people can edge, you know, just with their hands. I can't do that. It always looks like terrible. So you got to use the tape yeah. and everything, and that just takes forever. It yeah, sucks. that's why we're in cannabis, right? So, yeah. um, okay, so uh, that was the funnest part. Um, and I don't want to throw an open ended one at you, but I mean, challenging uh, outside of licensing, like just getting the dispensary open. Forget that. You got your license when you're opening up. Like, what was the most challenging? I mean, I'd have to imagine what people, maybe, I don't know, hiring or setting it up, ordering the right products, building building your brand? I mean, what was like that hardest part that you just like were not ready for when you guys were opening? I would have to divert that towards Matt because Matt really yeah. took took the bull by the horns mm-hmm. when we got the license and we just said, all right, Matt, you're running this show. It's a good and, point. And yeah. we're all going to yeah. focus on the next Remember few that question that so at. I can ask Matt. I'm going to put <laughs> yeah, it in spot. He won't see the specific <laughs> parts. I'm going to no, throw I, I think that ball. I think that at the beginning we just everyone was trying to do everything. Everyone wanted to help. Yeah. Everyone wanted to be part of something, but we didn't no one basically wanted to say, well, I'm not getting paid for this. I'm not doing it. Mm-hmm. You know, we all wanted to yeah, lend a helping hand, but we also in. got to get to a certain point where it's like, all right, who's going to take this and run with it so mm-hmm. we can go start the next We business. hadn't really fully defined everyone's roles. Yeah. Like, I mean, my maybe mine was the only real, like as grower, you yeah. know, like <laughs> I had the only 100% clearly defined role, you know. Mm-hmm. But, you know, that, that was, you know. Maybe something we should have did a little bit better, but yeah. you know, I could have what it should have. When we first get put our uh, our 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 business paperwork together, yeah. I'm trying to think of the words right now. Sorry, uh, um, have the license. Pet no, it was our operating agreement. operating agreement. Yes, yes. Derek said at nauseum, <laughs> roles and responsibilities. Who's doing what? I'm like, you're growing, Derek. I don't know what the hell I'm doing, but we're yeah. gonna figure yeah. it out. I'm gonna go you're find some. I'm gonna go find a few deals. And, and that comes from my old man, who my old man you're has done deal. many, many businesses, yeah. and you know that's what he'd always yeah. say is like that's how conflict occurs. If you mm. don't what, define these roles, oh, yeah. you know, then it's gonna potentially be a problem later yeah. on. You know. Yeah. So it's, we we left a, a little vague on that one, mm-hmm. but as we've as we've grown up a little bit and matured over the last you know year, yeah, we've realized anything we move into moving forward, we know we it needs to have some more structure to it. Yeah. So I would say that was probably the most difficult thing was trying to not suffocate what we had put together because mm-hmm. everybody everybody Cause wanted to excited. help. Yeah, everyone was excited. excited. Everybody wanted to help. Well, even even another thing would be Matt would be calling me in the beginning to come like hang a picture or something, and I'd be like, dude. Not driving all the way out. You got a hammer there. Put a nail yeah. in the wall and put it on there. Like just you, don't have. Ken I'm not. I'm it. not the maintenance man. Like yeah. just to come out there to like do this small yeah. little thing. You're perfectly capable of doing that. You know, <laughs> I'll come out there and if it's something like complicated or something to do, but if it's just a little small thing, like you can handle this. Like yeah, you got this. So then, okay. So when you guys um, when you guys open planted, then so you talked about you know what the fun is, what what the what the challenges might have been. Um, I guess right now, what would you say, especially you, you know, being operating there every day, like, you know, not to throw a plug, but what, what sets you guys apart or what, what do you try? Cause I know there's a lot of great places in town, no matter where you go, there's always good options. Right. But what, what do you guys try to do to be a little bit different? Um, what do you offer your customers? If I were to say, throw something out there that would like bring them into planet, what would you say that is? I mean, our variety. Yeah, I mean, variety. we have a, a yeah. you know, I was extensive. Kind of well, we have yeah. over a hundred strains now. I mean, it's, yeah. it, Victoria and Matt do a great job. Victoria's mm-hmm. great with sourcing the products. Matt's great at keeping things in order. Yeah, um, and I, I haven't really fully studied the other guys and how much they have, but mm-hmm. I can't imagine they have anywhere near the selection we have. And yeah. that's been the whole thing too of now adding, you know, adding more shelves and more and more and more yeah. display space to, you know, mm-hmm. to get all the cinnamon rice crispies that yeah. used to not be available, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, and that's, you got to have flexibility because these products are changing all the time. This week it's this and, you know, in a couple months now there's a new hot edible yeah. or this in a different packaging or whatever, you know. And this industry is still so far in its infancy. There's no, like, cookbook on how mm-hmm. to start a successful dispensary and run one successfully. Everyone has a different style, a different market. You know, our Whitmore Lake market versus our Flint market. Mm-hmm. Um, there's just different strokes for different folks and you've got to, you've got to, be nimble with that. You've got to be agile. Yeah. And I think that's one thing that we do in Whitmore Lake is that we placate to the demographic that's there and we pay attention to what the customers want, whether mm-hmm. the CBD blends here or THC carts there. Mm-hmm. Um, 
you know, heavy flour and flint. Uh, it just, it so just watching depends. watching the market, yeah, watching I, I what think the customers I, like, what people are asking it's, for. It's, it gets down to listening. And that's what I think that we are all really good at is we're all mm. great listeners. As, yeah. as, uh, as many egos as we can have in one room, we do, that's one thing we do very well as a team is we do listen. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what makes us more competitive than, than the, the other folks out there is that we'll take in consideration what people want and, yeah. and you can see the benefit of it. Okay. Well, so I'm going to, so how about this? I want to wrap this up. I I got one question for you guys. And then uh, I'm going to tell you everybody a little bit about our next episode. What's your, uh, what's your favorite method to, to smoke? I blunts, 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 pre-roll or blunt. So like a spliff or a blunt. And just so everybody knows a spliff is where you roll a little bit of tobacco, (laughs) tobacco on the top. I would I would say a blunt, a blunt. Yeah. Okay. Hands down. I, I say, know you don't smoke a ton. Yeah, I would but, say more joint. Yeah, you know, the you know that over say like a concentrate or pen yeah. or anything like that. That you seem to get the more fully encompassing mm-hmm. high with the terpenes and everything yes, else. So. Yes, yes, yes. I don't get that high off cars. Dabs, yeah. dabs, yeah, obviously different kinds. I mean, I actually yeah. smoked a lot this weekend down in in Detroit at Movement, yeah. so you know more than I usually <laughs> oh, do. That, yeah. yeah, I smoked a lot. I went up to Traverse City and smoked a lot as well. So okay, so we got flour. Um, we got flour. I would have to say, I started with flour, then I went to edibles, and honestly, I gotta say, concentrates for me is where it's at right now. I like I like doing the concentrates, which by the way, we are gonna have a cool episode coming up talking about concentrates because everybody thinks like concentrates involve this crazy rig and a freaking torch and all these machinery. But it doesn't. There's a lot of cool devices out there that allow you to uh, smoke in tons of different ways. So we'll be covering that with everybody. Um, but I guess uh, that's all I have. Unless you guys have any other comments, I appreciate you being on. I think some of the takeaways we got are, um, one, it takes some freaking grit to get out there in the cannabis space, um, which which is good, right? If, uh, if it was easy, everybody would be doing it. Um, two, I think uh, you really, it sounds like, right, got to get involved in local licensing, get involved in just everything you can in the community and, and find the right opportunities where you can actually be of value. Um, and I think that's it. So thank you, everybody. Um, Mike, thank you very much. Derek, thank you very much. I'm hoping to have you guys back. I'm going to make you co-host and uh, bring some cool guests on with me. Um, We are going to be bringing you guys a really cool episode next one. Episode three is going to be specifically, I'm going to have a special guest. I'm going to wait until episode three to tell you about that special guest. But we're going to kind of dig into the dirty and talk a little bit about just like cannabis science and plant science and kind of how you can jump into the industry, how you can maybe get a career, what type of uh, opportunities you have out there to learn and how these opportunities are actually providing um, opportunities for the whole entire space to get better. We're going to talk a little bit about how the space is growing from bringing people in from other professions. So I think you'll really like this one. And uh, yeah, looking forward to seeing you soon. Cheers. Cheers.